Hello, this is Linda again, um, just sharing with you um, a bit of the materials for the Milan Art Institute uh, program. I'm going to cover just a bit of the um, oil um, paints and materials that you will probably need to start with, um, which will be most of, most of these because they do have, in the first part, they do heavily get into oil painting. Um, which a, a lot of people haven't done before or kind of shied away from oil painting. Um, so first of all, you really need um, your solvents, which is, I buy the um, Winsor Newton um, odorless um, solvent because of the, the smell and the toxicity that it carries with it. And... Um, a very ventilated place if you're going to to work with it but um, Windsor and Newton has a really good um, odorless solvent definitely um, a need <clears throat> the other um, things that you will need this is a solvent free um, gambling it is a, uh, a painting medium that is used for mixing with your paints or your oils um, and it helps uh, the, the increases the flow of oil colors and it also helps with the, the, them to, to dry a bit, the paints to dry a bit quicker. Um, and this is a non-toxic um, liquid to work with. Now, in the UK where I live, gambling is hard to get your hands on. You can order it through Amazon. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but I have to say it's it's well worth the purchase. So I use it very very sparingly, um, and if I use it, it's going to be on probably paintings that I would want to sell, or you know, uh, but make sure you use it very sparingly because it can be quite expensive. The other um, medium, uh, this is kind of an oil color medium, is to is the uh, liquium. Um, I buy quite a bit of this. You just have to really shake it up before you use it. It works in the same way the Gamblin uh, medium works, but you'll use, so you can use either one. Um, this is less expensive um, bought in the UK um, than the Gamblin is. The, so some of the materials um, also that you use if we are drawing on your canvas or doing any, any kind of work on your canvas before you begin to paint and you want to save the, the drawing work that you've put on the canvas, you'll need a fixident spray and one that doesn't smell a lot and you have to be really careful when you spray these. You probably wanna be in a well-ventilated area when you spray, it doesn't take a lot just a little spritz over your, your canvas to hold on to the drawing. So when you're, you're putting on your paints, it doesn't do away with the drawing that you would need. Um, right, and then some of the tools. Obviously, your scraper tools. These are, I use these all the time. These are very, very handy for work on your canvas or just scraping up paint. Um, or mixing your colors. <clears throat> I don't, I'm, I'm not in the habit of mixing my colors with a paintbrush, but I do use, if I'm gonna do a portrait or a lot of work, I use these to mix my paint with. If I've got a lot of paint to mix, like uh, skin tones. The other little tool that will be required in the first part of the, I think one week one through five is the nibs. <clears throat> These are like little rubbers and they allow you to subtract off of your canvas. You can use other things like Q-tips and different things, but these really come in handy and they're very inexpensive to buy. If you need to order these, order these. You can order these through Amazon here in the UK. Um, you can order them on Amazon. You may wait a little while for them, so get these ordered if you don't have them. The other uh, material or, or other tool that I would say is very handy to have are your little scrapers, just the little plastic scrapers 
kind of help move your paint around a little while, you know, around the canvas, or can also serve as a tool for measuring on your canvas, especially when you're doing cityscapes. These help with buildings and windows. And you can get them in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Another inexpensive tool to buy. Um, definitely wipes. This is not an advertisement for Huggies, but wipes are, are essential for kind of wiping your paint and anything that it accidentally falls on the floor or yourself. Um, gloves, especially when you're using your oil paints or solvents to clean your brushes with. Um, just keeps your hands nice and clean. Masking tape, <laughs> a real big tool in using if you're, especially you're masking off or using, masking off the edges of your um, drawing paper where you want it to look nice. I use a lot of this. The other tool that I use, or uh, not the tool, but material that I buy is I buy the alcohol and it's a 70%. The reason why I, I use a lot of this is I use this to spray my palette and um, it actually works very, very well if you let it sit for a few minutes, scrape off your excess paints and use them if you can and then um, spray on your alcohol and let it sit on your palette for a few minutes and then it starts to kind of loosen the oil paint and then you use your little handy little scraper. This is great, I use this to scrape. Uh, it's got little blades and um, I use that to scrape my palette all the time. It's important to keep your palette clean. The, uh, I do use a glass palette you can see my little glass palette that I use, and I just got an inexpensive frame. You can get it at Hobby Lobby or Hobby Craft or whichever, or any framing store. Just take the frame off, and you use the glass in it. Make sure you tape off the edges so you don't cut yourself. But I use this to transfer my oils that I haven't used on my palette, so I can continue to use them. The, the big... Um, the big palettes, you can order a cutting board on Amazon. Really nice cutting board, not too expensive. And I use a white paper behind it, when, especially it helps you to see the true color of your paints. So a nice cutting board, nice big cutting board. Yeah? <clears throat> then some of the, the oils, the transparent oils, you are gonna really need to use that you'll use quite a lot of the selection of your transparent oils um, is the um, the burnt umber I use a lot of burnt sienna your French ultramarine your blue your sap green And your raw umber, these are your really, you'll use these quite a lot for, for um, your, um, on your canvases, be start, before you start doing any kind of oil painting, kind of prepping your canvases. <clears throat> the um, opaques that you'll really use is your yellow ochre, your Payne's gray, uh, I usually don't use black. I only use black on certain things. And I use a bit of Payne's Gray to mix my blacks. So, and then you'll use um, your cadmium yellow, your pale cadmium yellow. And your cobalt violet. You'll use some of that for, for doing some of your backgrounds. So I would say those are your main kind of oil paintings to start out with. Um, you can use you know, your cadmium reds, uh, your transparents. <clears throat> so
So the way you, you, on the back of your tube of your paint, you'll see the little squares that are there. A clear square will tell you that's a transparent, not an opaque. Opaque will tell you it'll be a, a solid dark square and that's your opaques, which go on top of your, um, your transparents. I don't think there's anything else that it's, it's worth during the program of purchasing some really good brushes. Um, but don't go out and spend lots and lots of money until you feel like that, that you're going to really start using them. I use them for portrait painting, um, the really good ones, and you'll see, you really will see the difference. Um, but I would say your filberts, um, your, your flatheads are definitely you'll use a lot of. You will, these are called a cat's tongue brush. And you'll see that it comes to a point to the head. You use those quite a bit. And also you'll need to purchase your big brushes for actually applying your, um, your transparents onto your canvas. And you do some of your work with, your big brushes are, are really preferred. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of the materials that you you will need for starting some of your oil painting work. The other thing I would tell you is don't rush out and buy expensive canvases. You can use your oil paper um, to do some of your oil work or your, your paintings. Might not be a painting that you would do to sell or, or usually do, but they have you do a lot in the program. Um, I'm not a big landscape painter or cityscapes, but that's some of the things that are required. Um, and so um, you can always go out and get the, these little panels. Uh, and I do quite a bit of study work on these little panels. They're cotton-based panels, so you will have to sand them down and use um, a bit of acrylic white, anything to, to kind of prep the surface. Sand them down a little bit because they're very thirsty. They like a lot of um, oil and they'll, they'll just, they'll take all of your oil paint. So if you prep it first before you use them, they're very inexpensive and pretty cheap. So um, I hope to see you all soon. Thanks very much.